If all of you know this, but inside the North Point Government Center, there is a great theater that holds 650 people. We, do, we have a, a large community theater. We take everyone. Everybody who wants to be a part of that program can be in it. We have a spring show and a fall show. We have uh, over 50 people in each production. We have a live orchestra, which is all volunteer. We incorporate people with disabilities into our program, and everybody is included invited. We've been doing this for 20 years. Besides that program, 20 years. Thank you so much. I can't believe it, but it's true. We also have another theater program, Berkshire program. Ms. Dolores Terzi is here representing that program. And Jennifer Morgriff is the director of that program just for people with disabilities that meet in that, in that center. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen those productions. We've been doing those every year. We also have um, a, a choral program, a show choir program that meets there. We have a summer camp. Rachel Baird is the director of that every summer for children in that, in that theater. Uh, we also have an experimental theater project, and that's for new playwrights. We produce their shows. That's in that theater. Nick, I'm sure you all also know that the Sweet Adelines under Bev Bruning meets there in that theater. And, of course, the Chesapeake Dick is Dick Dodds is here from the chorus. So that if, if you don't know that that theater is inside that building, it is. And we invite all of you to be part of it because we're getting ready to do our next production, which is Guys and Dolls and um, come out and support us. But anyway, I just wanted to tell you that's who I am, Debbie Staggerwald, and we have lots of other people here who want to say something about who they are. So I'm going to introduce Rich. Right. Yeah, and folks, if you need more space, then uh, you know, we'll be happy to give up our chairs. But uh, My name is uh, Rich Foote, and I'm, I've been a resident here for about uh, 12 years, and um, my family's in the back. And I taught at Dundalk High School for about eight years, uh, you may be familiar with a little-known website called Foot Forecast, and um, read by a few people in uh, the United States today. Um, well, it started just uh, right, right across the street at Dundalk High School by a Dundalk student. So that is a Dundalk original. So, and the point of that story is it's not about me. The students were the ones who actually came up with the idea, not me. And just like what we're doing here today, uh, this is an idea that was brought to us by others. And so we just, you know, it's a great opportunity to stand all of you, stand with all of you, uh, Dundalk United, because we have, we all have great stories about our communities, and uh, my family has had a wonderful time uh, being here for 12 years, and um, my wife is in the uh, in the school system. My children are to, are uh, in uh, at Eastwood Elementary, so they are, and uh, I keep forgetting their grades now because they keep growing up so fast. Is it third grade <laughs> and first grade? So I have two students in the school system. They are, as I like to say, they are Dundalk girls. They are born and bred here in this town, right? So Eastwood Elementary is just one of the three schools being affected, and uh, the position, the part of the meeting that I'm dealing with towards the back, if there's, if there's room to sneak back there later, is that you can visit what I call the, you know, the Baltimore County Cable. Uh, I'm very familiar with the school system. There are many folks here that also are as well and have more experience than I do, so I'm not claiming to be an expert, but as Debbie had mentioned earlier, and I'll pass it back to her in a moment, is that we're here to give you factual information based on what we know. So it's just like a weather forecast, right? If we tell you two feet of snow for Baltimore, you're going to say, okay, explain more. And we'll say, here are the facts, here's what we know, here's what we don't know. That's really the purpose of today's meeting, is to discuss factual information. Uh, what I'm relating to you is in the uh, outline that we have there. So we had our opening remarks, right? We wanted to introduce the Spirit Center. Um, I'm going to be at the uh, Baltimore County table. Uh, afterwards, if you want to speak, you know, ask me some questions, and I can show you the information that has been given to us as teachers and as educators. Um, and I'm sorry, also Hollibird. So can I just uh, do a shout out to my colleagues here? If you're from Eastwood, give us a clap. Okay. And if you're from Norwood, give us a clap. Right, they are very motivated. They just like to keep. Uh, you know, yeah, keep playing. Right? And Hollibird, if you're from Hollibird or connected with the Hollibird community, fantastic. That's right. That's right. Well, they're out salting the roads for the next storm. That's why they're not here. Right. And then anybody from Dundalk High School? There you go. Dundalk Middle School? Uh, Stricker isn't Dundalk, so I have to 
you know, and like some sugar. Grains, Cindy Plains. Okay. Anybody on this? Water's Edge. Bears Point. Tastico. I, I guess there are a few schools in the Southeast area. That's, that's a neat idea. Um, so anyway, the point is, you see where we're going with this, that we are all in this together. This is our town, this is our community. So I'm a teacher, I can talk a lot, so I, I, I need to stop now. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to pass it over to, to Debbie. And um, our procedure for the questions, uh, we'll discuss that and we'll have the index cards. So folks, if you, if you have an index card, I'm sorry, we have the index cards. If you have a question, just raise your hand and one of us will bring you a card. Okay, and then we'll go from there. So, ma'am? Okay, um, the one thing that we didn't talk about that we need to talk about is that um, some of you see these shirts, Dundalk United. What really that is, is we're just trying to form a coalition, a loosely based coalition of organizations and communities within Dundalk, our area, coming together to try to share information and bring the people together. That's all it is, and we hope you'll all be a part of it. Um, our main way that we're um, communicating with everybody is uh, Facebook. Um, I'd like to introduce Michelle Boyer right there, Michelle. Michelle runs our Save the North Point Government Center page. I hope you've all visited that page. There's lots of great information on there, and it's a way for everybody to put how they feel about what's going on on there. We have over 850 people on that page so far. That's a lot, you know. Um, then we also have um, Dundalk United is now have a Facebook page. So if you go to, say, the North Point Government Center, then you can go on Dundalk United's page. It's just a way for us to communicate, keep everybody informed. Um, John, did you want to speak right now? Okay, well, I'm going to let John speak. Once again, this is John Long. Uh, I am the founder and president of Clean Bread and Cheese Creek, and I'm also a uh, member of many local organizations here in the Dundalk area. Um, who here loves Dundalk? Come on! Yeah. Who here is tired of us being the back seat to Baltimore County? Yeah. All right. Think about it this way. During the War of 1812, when the British decided they were going to try and take back America, they came to D.C., which was protected by a professional army, and they marched right in and burned it down to the ground. Now, they tried to come to Dundalk, and Dundalk was mostly protected by militia and volunteers. And guess what? We stopped them dead. This is what the spirit of Dundalk has always been. It doesn't matter if a professional army couldn't do it, we do it. I know a lot of us here have had relatives who worked in the steel mills, who gave their lives in the steel mills. I lost both my grandparents, grandfathers, from the steel mills. And they built the ships that helped us win World War II. And there was a lot of pride here. And there's still a lot of pride here. And I'm pretty tired of everybody not giving us a say, not asking our opinion, just assuming that they know what's best for Dundalk, and they don't even live in Dundalk, most of them. <laughs> now, I know 99% of you all are here for the same reason. I know some of you aren't here for that reason, but I know 99% of you are here for that reason. And this whole coalition has started because we've seen way too many things and our community change without our input. We've seen too many structures that we know and love disappear without our input. And now we want a way to get information out to the people. This is just the first, I'm sure, of a series of challenges to let you know whenever there's public zoning hearings, to let you know whenever there's meetings, asking for public opinion so you can speak your mind and let your opinion know. Uh, I appreciate everybody being here. I see a lot of my volunteers from Clean Bread and Cheese Creek here, and that's incredible because I tell you what, you know, people bust on Dundalk and it, nothing irritates me more. I have done cleanups in Towson, I've done them in Owings Mills, I've done them all throughout the Baltimore County area as well, but you know what? You never see people work as hard as you do in Dundalk. 
They get in the streams, they get in the streets, and they are covered head to toe in filth and trash and stinky water. And you know what? The entire time, they're laughing and joking and putting their back into it. And then, when you give them pizza or something like that, they thank you. To me, that says a lot about the spirit of that. So, with that said, um, I guess I'll be back when they, we want to start going through the RFP. So, I'll give this over to Mr. Foote then. Thank you all very much for coming. So, again, if you, sorry, if you um, want to speak it with John about the RFP, uh, then he's going to be at that back corner table if there's two square inches. Um, so, yeah, I know, I understand. I just said, make sure that they know that later on, if afterwards, if you want, to, if you are looking for John after the, your discussion, then uh, he'll be in the back corner. I'll be back there. And then the one thing we're going to point out here is the index card. So if you have a question, what we're going to do is move into our you know public uh, questioning session. So what we'd like to do is there's a you couple of those. You should the first. We'll answer a lot of questions. Yes, sir. Yeah, I understand. What I what I just yeah this is uh, teachers uh, you know teachers have a tendency to get people. <laughs> is that we just want to start having you think about your questions as you're hearing the information that John and others are going to present. And so what we're going to do is pass around these cards. We just ask you to put your name on there and your community and your topic. So as you're hearing people say things, you go, hmm, hmm, you know. And then you can write your question down, and then you would uh, give that to one of us, because we'd like to respectfully, you know, recognize you and say, you know, Mr. Jones uh, from, you know, uh, Bear Creek would like to say something. Okay. And that way we all have a sense of who, who's here and, and, you know, just to respectfully introduce you. So, does that make sense? Yeah, three minutes. Right. Exactly. Sir. And I'm glad he pointed that out because uh, there was a meeting last week that someone you might know well went over three minutes. So, um, it was me. So I'm not going to do that this time. Ma'am? Okay. So does, do we want to go over the RFP? Okay, well, let's get a cop. Do you have it, John? Okay. All right, the RFP uh, is, as I said, it's available online. It was released earlier this week. We have a few summary copies back there, and we also have a, some hard copies, too, with sections highlighted. Now, the RFP states there will be three properties that are coming up for sale, but I know that most of us here are concerned about the North Point Government Center. Uh, it looks like this. If you are looking online, it is RFP number P-101, Sale of Baltimore County Property. And the North Point Government section is <coughs> section 2.3. Now, I can tell you, like I said, this is what I do for a living, is I respond to federal RFP. If something is not written in an RFP, it does not exist. Assumptions do not exist. The government tells us that all the time when I, we're asking questions. If we say to them, well, can we assume A equals B in this point? If it's not written there, there's no assumption, which is why they usually will allow a question and answer period on most RFPs for about two weeks, and then after that they will file an addendum to answer most of those questions. There is no question and answer period that I saw released for this, so they don't apparently appear to be putting out an addendum. The first part of this RFP is simply the location, which is everybody knows where it's at. The second part is the ownership. Now, the third part is where we start to get our concerns. Section 2.33, uh, it says within that section, the existing communication tower, which the county will retain, would potentially impact the use balance of the site. Now, a lot of people asked about the tower. It's not going to be moving. We know that for a fact. When the tower was placed there, we were told it was placed there by the police station so that way it could have 24-hour surveillance and be protected. We were told it is very important for our med emergency medical and police services in this area, so we had to maintain its security. So. There is no provision in the proposal saying that the bidder must continue to secure the tower. There is no provision in it that says that Baltimore County will continue to secure the power, tower. Now, once again, as I said, if it's not in the RFP, you cannot make an assumption. 
next section that we have concern over is section 2.34, which says replacement requirement. Now, under the request, replacement requirement, it says suitability of replacement facilities and relative quality of the replacement proposals will be determined by a committee. That means they tell us that if they replace the, they'll replace the fields or the facilities for our community programs. Whether that is equitable with what is currently there will be determined by a committee. It does not say who will be on the committee. It does not say citizens will have any input on the committee. It does not even say that residents or, or businesses in the area will even have an input on the committee. Now, when we posed this question, they said this answer is, to Baltimore County, they said this answer is not known at this time who will be on the committee. Once again, you can't assume that citizens will have an input on it. It doesn't say it. If it said it in here that a citizens panel or local residents would be involved in the decision-making committee as if the structure and the fields were equal, you can, you can say it's true, but it's not written in the RFP. So we could potentially be left completely out of the decision-making property as to whether what is being offered is equal with what we had. Next section is zoning, section 2.35, in which it says, Offerers can include an assumption that the county and, and county council will support a proposed planet unit development on this property, PUD. Now what that means is if somebody were to come up and say, hey, you know, I've got a great idea. I want to turn this into an industrial park. You guys are already upgrading, upgrading the road base to a, a nine inch road base, which is more than standard traffic level right in front of the center. You've got a lot of uh, heavy industrial employees here who don't have jobs, so I'm gonna put in an industrial center. Now, even though it is currently zoned as dense residential, if the county accepts the planned unit development or the PUD, that completely short circuits the zone, current zoning, which means that just because it's currently dense residential doesn't mean it will stay that way if a PUD unit development is accepted. So essentially almost anything could be put there if that is accepted by the county, whether you want it there or not. Excuse me, John. You need to tell people what PUD is. That's what I said, planned unit development. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. That's okay. The next last section is the one that bothers me and most of my volunteers absolutely the most and most of you. 2.36 environmental constraints. It appears that the site contains no major streams or wetland and there is no known significant unusual environmental conditions or environmental constraints impacting the utility of this property. Anybody who's been to the property knows there's a stream that runs right next to it and this is trying to tell us there is no stream there. Lynch Cove Run runs into Bear Creek. Bear Creek is a historic body of water which was very important during the War of 1812. Several community groups uh, are involved in put it, trying to get an established historic blue trail through Bear Creek, which is a kayaking, boating, and it'll highlight the beauty of Bear Creek as well as how the Bear Creek area was used by the British when they tried to take North Point during the War of 1812. Now, to me, to say there's no stream at all there is a bit of a concern. In December of this past year, 2012, Baltimore County contact, contracted the environmental consulting firm of Parsons Brinkerhoff to do a small watershed action plan study of Bear Creek and Old Road Bay, also called a SWAP. In that SWAP, which is also available online on the Baltimore County website, it noted Lynch Cove Run as a critical stream that required additional buffer area to what's currently there. Now, there's a decent amount of buffer there, and they're saying it needs more. If we pave it over and we put concrete on it, how much of a buffer area is going to be there then? So there's contradictions right there, because we've got a 
environmental analysis that was contracted by Baltimore County that says there's a stream there and it needs to be watched out and taken care of, and then in the RFP it says there's no stream there. So that's another concern. That pretty much is the end of the sections that actually do affect North Point completely. The entire proposal has several other things in it, which is a lot of standard language for our piece, but you guys can all take your time and read through it. Those are the main sections. We have proposals at the back table with the sections I spoke of highlighted, and uh, we also, like I said, they're available online. John, I have a question. Sure. Can you say, is the proposal when the bids are due and the cost? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Also on the RFP, request for proposal, it says that bids for this property are due on 4-05-2013 at 3 p.m. It says there will be a pre-proposal conference on January 30th, 2013 at 9.30 a.m. There is also an email address for Mr. Jason Stevenson and a phone number if you have any questions. So, once again, I appreciate everybody, and remember, assume you cannot make any assumptions in an RFP. If it is not written in an RFP, people can say, well, you know we're going to do this, or we know you're going to, or you can assume it doesn't matter unless it's in writing in this RFP, or unless it's in writing with, from an addendum that follows. Okay. Thank you all very much for your time. If you have additional questions about the RFP, you can ask them. Thank you, John. That was great. We really appreciate it. Um, one thing that we know, so we know that they have until April the 5th to bid on the property, and then we've been told that the, the county council has to approve it, and the county council is going to have three months. Isn't that correct, John, that right. we've been told? Three months that they will have to, to decide on the, on the fate of the property. Um, we know that the plan is that the government center will be sold, Eastwood Elementary is going to be turned into the police station. They're moving the police, the plan is to move the police station to Eastwood Elementary. And then they are going to take the children from Eastwood Elementary and they are going to put them at Hollabird Middle and Norwood. And that will be combined and it will either be a K through 8 school or a 4th grade through 8th school. We've been at that meeting and that's what we were told. Um, that's, that's basically what we know. You want to, and, okay, Richard's going to talk about that. And, uh, yeah, so the, I'm going to try to set the example here. Does anybody have a timer? <laughs> All our phones Okay, do. okay. So, is there some, uh, there's some, okay. Ready, three minutes, set, go. Okay, so I have a nice, uh, one of our volunteers is going to get the Baltimore County letter, and I'm just going to very briefly go over this because uh, Miss Debbie made an excellent point that, you know, Eastwood and Norwood, of course, and uh, North Point Government Center are all related, they're all interconnected, and there's a lot of things, and we know you folks are going to have a lot of questions. Um, so this is just, uh, again, like John had the RFP, and uh, what I'm, if you can give me a one-minute warning, okay. that'd be good. Um, so this is a document that we can get a copy for you if you'd like. Um, this is a letter that was sent home to children in their folders uh, Friday, I believe, uh, and there's a three-pager here, and it just says, Eastwood, Hollibird, uh, Norwood, Community Questions and Responses. So I know my time is going to run out, so what I'm going to be doing is just telling you the way this happened. Essentially, it was that December 10th, there was a community meeting at Halliburton Middle School. Uh, it was not published in the Eagle. It was not published in the East County Times. There was not a two-week notification process uh, to notify the public of the consideration of a proposed school closing. Um, so those are words that are in state law, and they're also in the letters, and they're also in other documents that we have. Um, and the point is that, so what the parents did was there was a process that went forward and the parents were asked to come at different uh, input meetings and ask questions uh, and submit those questions to the county. And then what the county did was summarize the questions on this, and this is a three-pager, uh, but this is the basic ones, okay? And so we'll just give you an example. Um, will Eastwood and Norwood keep their individual school names? There are two proposals. And uh, what I'm going to do uh, after I speak is I'm going to go up on the board and just do a very quick summary up there of Plan A and Plan B um, on this, how the school situation, because some of you may not be familiar with it. But uh, so one of the questions that many parents asked, including my own, because I have children that went to Nord and Eastwood, 
was um, that question, and the answer from the county uh, stated here, based on the final decision regarding option A or B, one minute, um, or any viable options, the superintendent will comply with board education policy 7520, naming of the building and dedication. So, of course, as a parent, I'm going to go take a look at board policy 7520 um, and see what it says. And the other thing I want to take a look at for myself, and we can show you, is was policy 7520 changed at any point recently prior to this announcement? And so this is a question that I have, and I don't have the answer because, honestly, I haven't looked, uh, but I will. And um, so if you'd like to discuss more about the Eastwood-Norwood uh, situation, I'll be in the back table. There's other colleagues here of mine that uh, you know, know a lot about this as well. But when we give you an answer, we're either going to tell you this is what the county has told us, or we will say, I don't know. All right. So, do I? Do I? Oh, okay. Well, thank you all for being so uh, <laughs> cooperative. And I'm going to do the A-B summary on the board, and I'll pass it back to Ms. Debbie. All right. Well, uh, are we ready for questions? Are we ready for a statement? Are we ready? We are ready. Does anybody have a question? Can you pass that? Can you come? You want to come up, ma'am? Okay. <laughs> This is um, from Sandra from Colgate. And I want to say this right now. We don't have all the answers, you know. We only know what we've told you. But we're going to talk about it and we'll have what we can. But I, this is this lady's question. If the police department was moving somewhere in the center of the community it serves, I have no problem with that. Why is it moving near the city line? off Eastern Avenue that is not inside the community, that does not deserve the community from the inside out. And that's a very good point. Really. And I think that we can put these questions on our on Facebook page. And I think they're very relevant. We, yes? We have not been told that. No, we have not. We have not been told that. No. No. Yeah. We have not been told. There has been nowhere it's been stated it's temporary. No. Mm -mm. Next question. A couple of my friends are officers across the street, sir. A couple of my friends are officers across the street. They've been told that is a permanent move over there. Move. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What about the fireworks? Great question. Great question. And, you know, people say fireworks, what? But as we all know, the fireworks are very important to our community. Thousands of people come. All of us come. All of us spend money. It helps the businesses. It, it brings us all together. It's important to us, and this is our community. Very good question. I've got some more here. Any prospective buyer who would require the fields for their operation would obviously operate enough activity and traffic to necessitate additional traffic signals to allow for traffic to exit property making a left turn. I'm sure all of that, that's a very good question or statement. But it's valid. Of course, there's going to be more traffic, there's going to be more everything. We don't know. We don't know what's going to be there. <coughs> Does Comar Regs allow the school at Eastwood to be sold? I don't know that answer. John? Rich? Does Comar, and that's the state laws, a 30-second answer. Um, okay. Uh, there's two schools of thought. School idea number one is that uh, the school board will make a final decision, and then there is a process that is gone through by the state law on how that would be handled. And then there's another school of thought, which simply says that um, uh, the school board uh, perhaps 
uh, doesn't need to inform you until the decision has been made that a decision is being considered. That's as fast as I can summarize it. And I can tell you to answer the last question, uh, the board president on December 18th uh, on the video said, uh, no information has been given to the board about the closing of a school um, at the board meeting. So, it's interesting. Okay, we have another question. Where will replacement fields, a theater, et cetera, be located? Will replacements be built before the North Point is shut down? We don't know. Um, they've been told, we've been told, I've been told that decision has not been made. Well, Johnny Sr. is here, so he might know. <laughs> we can certainly ask him. You certainly may, sir. And welcome to the meeting. First of all, I, uh, you have to excuse my appearance here today. Uh, my son, Delegate Oshesky, and I, we had a pre-planned vacation that we uh, took. I got notice of the meeting yesterday, but Johnny and I thought it was so important to be at the meeting that we cut our vacation short uh, to be here to tell you what's going on. Uh, with my position, first of all, I just want to tell everybody that, um, as you know, I've been your elected representative for 14 years. I think over those years, I've uh, listened, I heard your concerns, and I acted on those concerns. And I have had discussions with the administration about this, contrary to what the paper has said. Uh, they took some words out of context from my aide in the office. Uh, but I will tell you that if I, my discussions with the administration, I have said that if the programs are not replaced at, at, at least the equal level or better, um, and fields are not replaced, um, then I will not be able to support it, period. And so I'm here today, and that's why it was so important for me to be here today to state that fact. Um, John, sure. Excuse me, but we need that before anything's taken away. No. What, 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 hold on a second. What, uh, hold on a second. What are they taking away? Our building. Hold on, hold on a second. Uh, hold on. Uh, I just, if you listen to what I just said, I am not going to let them take anything away unless it is replaced with something that is equal or better to what is going on now. And, hold, hold on a second. There's a proposal, there's a process, and when the proposals are put in, that's when we'll know what people are proposing. And when they, if the proposals don't meet the standards that you and I agree to with replacements, then I won't support it, period. Oh, well, we appreciate that. Oh, hold on a second. When you talk about vacant buildings and people talk about the shopping center right across the street, okay, the owners of that shopping center had it leased for 15 years. They just took the shopping center back and they were investing major dollars, millions of dollars into the shopping center. As you can tell, they've already started. They tore down the gas station. They tore down the... the oh, can I finish, please? They tore down the gas station. They tore down the car wash, they tore down the brake place that was a nice sewer and the tire place. They've gated it up, they put trees around, they're still redoing their facade. They, are, they have a plan in place to redo the whole shopping center. That is what's happening right now. They have an anchor that's going to go right there on the corner where, the, where it used to be. We have to look for economic development. We've lost jobs at, at Bethlehem Steel, we lost jobs at General Motors, and if we have an opportunity that if everything is met, the pro rec programs, I grew up in the rec council programs. You think I'm going to let something happen to our, for the detrimental to our kids? Absolutely not. So that's why I thought it was so important to come back here today and let you all know that that's where I'm coming from. I also want to put to bed misinformation and rumors about my position. That's why I'm here today. Well, we thank you. You're thank quite you, well. John. We really appreciate it. Because we, we know that you're, you're a very powerful councilman in the county council, and we need you. We are counting on you to help us and support us. And we thank you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Everybody, wait a minute. Wait a minute. One thing that I was trying to say is what we wanted to say is that we, want, we don't want to hear that down the road they're going to replace it. We don't want to hear that down the road that's going to happen. We want things before anything's taken away from us.
that's the point we're trying to make. And one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. We want to be part of the decision. That's right. We want our voices to be heard. We want to be part of it. Okay, thank you. And that's great. And we thank you. And you always have been. No, we haven't. We don't. Please, guys, we want to be respectful. Please, please. We want. We need John on our side. I am on your side. And that's I've why we. And, and that's why we're so glad you're here. Uh, and we really are. I think that. Uh, no, the, I, I mean it was that important that. I, I mean, as you know, I got a, a, a notice yesterday, and I we cut it short so we could be here today. I know how important it is. I think the citizens of the community of Dundalk would feel a lot better off if they knew that they would have space equal to what they're losing and fields equal to what they're losing before they lose what currently have and that the citizens, not representatives of the citizens, but the citizens' community themselves would have input in deciding if the equality to what is being offered is equal to what is being lost, not being told for them. Thank you. I'm sorry. And, and Mr. Long, I... Um, I just have to let you know that that's why they have a process. It's called RFPs, Request for Proposals, and it's called um, SFPs uh, for Proposals. Um, you have to, you just can't say to somebody, I'm, you come here and give me a plan. You have to be transparent about it and you have to have a process. But John, and that's what the process is. Excuse me, but the best and, I, and if you, heard, I'm sorry, and if you heard what I said, I said that I was not going to support anything that wouldn't replace the programs at the level they're at or better or any of the fields. And, and that's something that will be discussed. Once the proposals are in, we can, dis we can discuss it. I don't know what the proposals are going to be. I don't know where pe what people are going to do. But, John, I think people are so angry because it was put up for sale without we, we didn't have any input into that. When you, when you say it's put up for sale, it doesn't mean it's on the market that they're, it's going to sell, like you sell a house. Somebody comes in and the re it's up for sale? It's up for sale because part of the process is you have to have proposals. But we weren't consulted. We didn't know. Okay. We found out in the paper. Here's the, here's the other thing. Let's say we don't do anything with that building. Nothing. Sooner or later, that building is aged, and with the economy the way it is, and, and, and with money having to be put in buildings, if they don't have the money, and, and then they're, they're trying to save money, build what somewhere? I represent one of the local recs. We actually been putting a proposal to get the basement space of that, uh, of that rec center to expand because of how many kids that we got from the community. We have over 100 kids. I understand we, that. I know. But we were denied that space even though that we were going to put our own money into it. Not even county money. Our own money well, into it to expand and to rehab it. Well, let me ask you all this. If, there, if a proposal came out and, and, all the pro and, and there was... A, Say, let's say there was a new building or a new, it doesn't even have to be a new building, if it was a newer building and your programs were in there and you had, um, uh, you know, you, your kids were playing in, in a gym that wasn't dingy and has mold in it, you got roofs leaking, all that stuff's happening at that building if you believe, I don't know if you know it or not. We're the in air, it. The air we're in the building. The air conditioning and the heating, it's, it's costing all of us money because it's the outdated system that's there. And the county is not going to reinvest in that building. So sooner or later, they're going to do something with that building. Um, that's just the reality. And if we can have an opportunity to better our programs, have a better place for our kids and our adults, of course, the Chesapeake, sky's the limit, if we can have that through a proposal, then there's nothing wrong with that. And the, the alternative is if we don't do anything, then one day they're going to say, well, we're not going to do anything with that building anymore. It's costing us too much money. And then what do we do with the building? They can't do that. They can't do it. Okay. It's open space. We know. John, you know me. You and I played ball together for a lot of years. We worked together. I know Sonny Minnick. The problem with this, with this whole scenario is simply this. Number one, this has been going on for months, and this county was not informed. Okay, we know for a fact that it was happened back in the summertime, but everybody sitting in this room, nobody found out till a month ago. Okay, that's the problem. It's a lot of stuff going on, and we are not being kept informed. Secondly, you're tearing down two brick buildings, which brick's not going to come down, and you keep saying how old North Point is. 
when you got the Tapsco Neck Elementary sitting right up the road that's 20 years older than North Point, that's standing fine. They gutted that. They can gut that building over there a lot cheaper than turning around and knocking down two brick buildings and turning around and moving the police station all the way over on the city to the city line where I live in Water's Edge. And I know, I remember when Sparrows Point moved up to North Point, they said the response times could be so much longer. I drove truck for a lot of years. I sold real estate in this area for a lot of years. And I know one thing, if you're in the middle of Eastern Avenue in the middle of rush hour, good luck. How do police well, order well, hold on a second, hold on a second, Mark. Uh, I, you know, uh, when you talk about police time, that's when we should have the police captain, I mean the police chief here. He's the one who, who works with it on a day-to-day -day basis. He's the one who knows about public safety. And do you think for one second he's going to put a public safety at, 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 at a fault for, for... Here's the other thing. When you talk about response time, those cars ain't going from the, from the precinct to the neighborhoods. Each of those neighborhoods have patrol cars. Those patrol cars are already around that neighborhood. So when you say to me, uh, we're going to lose response time, why? Those cars are still going to be in the same areas they're patrolling now, Mark. It's just going to be the same. Uh, well, they, well, when they have shift changeovers, they have cars that are out there that are different than when they have shift changeovers. Over. And one, one minute. Let me finish this. John, if they're out on a call, they can't drop everything and run to another call. I know about the shift changes. I know about the police. I've dealt with them. Okay. But if they're out on the call, they can't drop something and run all the way across town. So if you have shift change and you have a call right here in the middle of Dundalk and something happened in Eastwood, what are you telling me? I'm saying if somebody, there's a call over here. Yeah. Okay. okay, right now, okay, Mark, but if that shift car is on a call in Eastwood, right, and there's something down here, are you, that's, they, say each area's got their own cars, they do, each area has their own cars, they do. You say Eastwood's going to be favored by moving the police station and then say that the rest of the community's not going to be affected. I, I didn't say that because of the move Eastwood's going to be a safer community. People may believe that because the police station is right there in there, that police station is right there in your neighborhood. I, that's all. What? I, I was wondering, yeah. what about the transparency in the schools? Anything that we have been told has not has not given us a question. We have been asked to make decisions on something we don't even know anything about. Mm -hmm. You're you're moving children that are five years old to children that are 13. That is everything from Santa to sex. I'm sorry. That is a drastic age difference. I, 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 I hear what you're saying, but, but, but I, I hear what you're saying. I feel like I live in the city. Everything from K to 8, taking away police stations, taking away fire stations. Taking away rec I live in the county. I don't want to live in the city because of stuff. Nobody like has taken nothing away from anybody. Okay. That's what I keep hearing. Okay. But let me address, let me, let me, let, can I address, let me address the question. Um, I, I have control over what can happen at the government center. It has to come to the council. We have a superintendent and we have a board of education, and they are charged. Mr. Ed Parker's here. He'll tell you he served on the board of education. He still are, correct? And they have issues that they have to deal with. Some of them are overcrowding in schools, which is happening now. That this is part of the. If the government center went away, I'm not so sure that the Eastwood issue would go away because they're trying to fix a problem at Howard Middle School, which is under capacity. And if the superintendent and the Board of Education make a decision, I don't have the power to overturn that decision, do I, Ed? Thank you. All right, folks, uh, excuse me, folks. We're, we're, we, we want to have questions from the community that have been written on the cards be spoken to the group so we have, you know, again, transparency that your voices are heard so that our distinguished councilman can answer those questions or someone like Mr. Parker can address those. So if you don't and mind, I'll be here I'm as long as you need to. I'm sorry. Thanks. That's all right. But I'm going to play the teacher for a moment and say we need to file procedure, okay, or I'll be getting in trouble with, you know, Mrs. Foote. Um, <laughs> so I understand. But there are questions here on the table, and we're going to read the questions. And if you ask that question, okay, then we want to make sure that answer gets out to you. So we've categorized them. Yes, that's right. We've categorized them, okay? I appreciate the link. So here's one question. Um, I'm just going to name one here. If the building is not sold with money, then they are 
if the building is not sold uh, with the money that's expected, so there's the, the expectation that money will be produced from the sale of a building. Oh, that's Miss Piper. Can you, you can relate it better than me, so go ahead. We are all Americans. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, all right. So, Ms. Piper, Ms. Piper, did you get some information? Okay, so here's a question uh, from someone in Colgate. Um, and again, this, uh, uh, Ms. Harris, if you're here. Um, but uh, the question was, if the police department was moving somewhere in the center of the community that it serves, you know, uh, Hollibird and Wise, I think that's the center of the 7th District, um, why is it moving near the city line off Eastern Avenue that is not inside the community that has not served the community from the inside out? Um, that was Ms. Mrs. Harris's question. And it is the question other parents had was the you know, relative geographical location of the police station 90% further distant from the rest of the community. I know that we discussed no, the, the transportation. I think that's a question that, that the superintendent, the Board no. of Education, can probably answer given their input of why they come to that conclusion. Right. I exactly. wasn't privy to exactly. discuss so, so that's, uh, that's the delineation between, you know, the school and the uh, government. So that's the question there. Here's another one um, that um, uh, recreation areas. We're just covering a couple of school questions. Um, what happens to recreation areas around the school? Uh, there's not very much parking available, and will they have to uh, take those areas? So the question here, I think, is related to Eastwood, and I'm assuming this is Ms. Uh, Fegley. Ms. Begley, can you relate, expand on that? The programs at the rec programs at Eastwood? I don't know what programs are at Eastwood. Is yeah. it? Okay. Um, there is not very much parking in some of that school. Um, they had to talk a lot in the front of the school. They just expanded and moved it in back with the parking. And if they move the police station in there, they're going to have to have more parking than what's available up there now. And we have all our recreation areas for them in that school that all the children in the neighborhood play in. And uh, basketball court, uh, tennis court, uh, monkey bars, and all that kind of stuff. And they're ball fields. They have one up top and one at the bottom. So what are they going to take? They're going to have to take something to make more parking for that area. And, and there again, um, I think that would be something the police chief, um, you know, the one who runs that department and has been in discussions with the administration, I mean, we're with the Board of Ed, um, to uh, answer that question for you, because I, I don't have an answer. Right. Yes, ma'am, I grew up in Eastwood. Yes, ma'am. And uh, there's one, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Russell is uh, in the back, and uh, so there's one opportunity that we have to address some of the councilman's points and yours, is that we can submit a request for a public information hearing held by the county. Um, they have glitzier stuff than us uh, over here. And uh, so that, that way, you know, there can be some information, like you said, from the police chief and from the fire chief and from public works and, and the recycling folks and, and things like that. Well, I mean, that's, so Mr. Long, we have a form that people would fill out and send in to request the public information meeting. And so just that we can put that in an email and very easy to get it to you. I just want to keep going with questions. If you have questions, write it on a card or something. If we get you a card there. So a couple other things here is, um, and this is a, an excellent question, and I can't, I don't have an answer at all. And um, but it's just that what has uh, been the, the rationale given for the police station having to move to Eastwood? So uh, and that was something that other folks have asked is 
why do we need it to why does it need to be moved there and um, I, I don't know I, I don't have the whole answer. I know you may not know that I don't have the whole answer but um, as you know uh, it's all part of the equation that if they sell the building um, if they, you know, and if you get what you want, and all the programs are better, and it's, it, it, you know, I don't even know what's going to happen. Maybe somebody puts in a proposal if they build a new a new building close by, and it houses all the programs, and it meets all the needs of the programs, but you ha haven't even given that a chance to be heard. And that's the only thing I'm saying. Uh, but with the police station, I guess with it being part of the building, it's it's an older building. It's just that they're they're looking for a new police station. Uh, eat, you know. I think the police chief will tell you. I don't. Know, I'm not going to speak for him, but he's going to tell you that it's an older building. We, we're looking for another building, and maybe if all this goes away, maybe in a few years they just go and the county looks for another place to build a police station or, or something online. It, it may. It may be about economics. It may be about you know they're looking at. So I, that's something that he'll have to give the answer to. To be honest with you. Kevin Cabinet says it's police department's idea. The police department's idea. Right. Well, I don't know if they said that. <laughs> maybe they were in their sleep, maybe, but maybe not. It was in, so. it was in, it was in the newspaper. They, they, Kevin said it was his idea, and the police, the police chief, the police chief right. said it was. I, yeah. If you give me that article, I'll take Actually, it to the, the press administration, release. and I'll find out what's going on. Yeah, the press release from December 11th, sorry, on the county website, and then actually that was another one issued on the 14th, and it's still on there states that the county executive, you know, proposed that idea initially, and then the Eagle stated differently um, January 4th. So um, here's one. I, I'll uh, try to find out for you. Yeah. But uh, if there needs to be um, proposals for things to happen, why are we told our school would no, no longer be open at the end of the school year? So, oh, I'm sorry. Well, then they have better information. Yes, sir. Uh, it says BCPS has no request to close Eastwood. And, um, and again, that's the, the only quote that I can give you about that is that the Board of Education stated, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Board President stated that no information had been, had been presented to the Board and they were not of any, aware of any proposal. And that was a question that other members of the community had, which was if the Board President is stating no information has been presented, but an agent of the Board is telling us to pick A or B, and um, we were wondering, is there an option C? which is to keep the building, um, you know, so that's just, that's a question that we've all had. Um, so thank you for whoever wrote that. Um, we want to do some questions here about the RFP and whatnot. So we have, um, here's one. Um, will the bids in response to the RFP be opened at a public meeting? Or I guess is that uh, uh, open for review by the public at a meeting? So I guess I'm, that's, I'm not an expert on that. I'm not an expert. I, I, know, I know the bids are opened. Um, I, I can find out the answer out for you. That's the answer I have. So I'm going to have one. So um. <laughs> I, would, I would think it would be an open meeting. It could be an open meeting. Okay, where, sir, yeah. I would think it would be an open meeting where they would think it would be open. I would imagine. Thank you. you would think so. Uh, yesterday, Delegate Oshesky, Delegate Weir, and myself uh, confronted the uh, County Executive's um, staff, and I asked her, uh, we, we're not happy with this, this RFP. Are you going to have a public hearing? She said, no, we have not planned a public hearing for this. So that, there's a very short answer. Uh, we were told that yesterday. Uh, why? I don't know. Uh, the, the, the only answer she gave me was no, we are not going to have the, the open hearing. We a public not hearing. What happens in our community. Now, that's from the county executive's office, not the councilman or anybody else. Pardon? Yes, it would. Yeah, well, that's another issue. I don't know how. In Towson. I, I, this is what I'll do for you. This is what I will do. I will talk to the county executive and I will tell him that we would like to have a meeting with the community so that he can hear or his directors can hear. I would like to have the police chief we there. Want him there. Okay. We will. Uh, look, I, I will. All, all I can do is I can be your advocate and I can ask to do what you want me to do, and I'll do that. Thank I will you. ask him That's to be there. Fun. 
I will ask, the, ask him to have the police chief there, and I will ask him to have the superintendent there. That way, all your questions can be answered by the people who have been involved in doing this. And all I wanted to say is this, and, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. If at the end of the day, we can have a place where all our programs are taken care of in a new and better facility, no ball fields, okay, and have a chance to have economic development in our district, right here in our district. Hold on, let me get to that point. That's the first point. Would, would, would we agree that that, I think, is a positive thing that happens in our community? You, you, you don't want economic development in your community. At what cost? Okay, we got people who are out of jobs right now, who are out of benefits right now, and you don't want economic development in this. In this, in this. We want I fields. Just, I just, Guys, please be quiet. Well, I just said, please, if you have your quiet. fields, and if you have all your programs taken care of, and they're in a, in a, in a better place, wouldn't that be nice? Okay, okay, some of you say no, some of them say yes. And for the, one second please, and for the school issue, I, I will go back and find out if there's another way that they can do something. But they're going to have to do something because Hollibur is 58% of capacity. So they have to do something. I, it's, it's not Eastwood's fault, it's not Norwood's fault, it's not Dundalk Middle's fault but it has to be addressed. And that's what the superintendent and the Board of Education are charged to do for the students of Baltimore County. And that's what they're doing. I'm not saying it's the right thing. I'll try to get in dialogue to make something else happen where everybody can be concerned. But you know what? What happens if they take the students from Dundalk Middle School when they take them all to Hollabird Middle School? Well, hold on a second. You don't think the parents are going to say you're taking my kids out of a school to go to another school? I'm going to get the same argument. But they're the same age. That's just that's the thought I had. Guys, kids please, to to guys, school. you got to calm down. I please. understand, from my perspective, I understand the most difficult um, issue is the school. I understand that. I get it. I grew up in Eastwood, so I get it. I know what's going on. So is the theater. <laughs> it's important to all but, of us. But, all you, of but, the you're, but you're not listening to me. We I, are. Okay. I just said, at the end of the process, if you, are, if you get a better theater, let's say you get a better theater. But can I say one thing? Yeah. We want to be a part of the process. We want to know what's happening. Uh, we, want this, we want it to be built before they tear the other one down. And we want to be at the table. I, I, I understand no, no. that. We're just but, saying we want to be a part of the decision-making process about all all of it. Right. We want to be included. Look, if, if, somebody, if somebody puts a proposal on the table and you look at that proposal and you are happy because they're going to take care of sky's the limit and they're going to give you a brand new facility, okay, what is wrong with that? Wait a minute, guys. Please be quiet. Okay. Come yes. on. Yes. I understand that. I have not ignored the community of Eastfield in this process. It's a process that's playing out right now, and you, a lot of you from, are from Eastfield here, and I'm here today. I'm not offering anything. I'm just, I, I am just being your elected official saying, let's look at what could be, and if it isn't good enough, then it, it'll stay the way it is. We'll have an aging right. building, and your kids from the program will be in that, in that building. With, and the kids will be, the younger kids will be playing at gymnasium. Look, I coached and kids played in there back in 20 years ago. And I know what that indoor gym looks like. I know what it smells like. And I know what's behind those walls. I guarantee you there's mold behind those walls. I guarantee it. So our kids are playing in there. And, and, and it's like, I just, you know, if you well, had my, a better facility, I just don't know. Well, what. my question is, I'm Jane Brown, all around, I'm vice president of the Green yes, Mountain Association. I know Kevin Cabinet needs $18 million, and my question is to all of you, why does he have to come down to Dundalk to get it? Why does he need $18 million? How many million times dollars? have they taken from us over and over again? And how have you heard the rumors about the box stores? 
believe me, we have empty stores up and down Merritt Boulevard. Okay. Then we have houses that are sitting in foreclosure. We don't need more residents. So what do we need down here? We already have it. And why should we let them come down and take it away? And they will promise you the world. But do you, have, do you trust these people? No. They have never included you ever. And Kevin Cabinet is not for us. Right. And he never will be for us. And you need to be loud and clear. And you need to let your voice be heard. Because he is not going to be on your side. Because he has... His own agenda. Uh, if you, look, Thank you very much. I'll put it to you this way. If you don't want the process to play out, you don't want a chance of maybe having a new building and all this and that, we can cut the whole thing out today and be the way it is. That would that be right? Hold on a second. Thank you. Yes, sir. But, but I don't know that until I get a proposal. And does it hurt to see something? And then if it's not good enough, then say, well, let's, then we don't do it. You decide what is not good enough. You do. Folks, we have a procedure. How? We're not even Folks, we have a procedure. 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 Let's see, what's that? Nine times. Folks, we have a procedure. <laughs> I, I warned the committee I would do that. Okay. okay. There's another gentleman that I think has a chance to speak, and, and uh, Johnny O. Jr. is going to speak in just a moment. We want to get another question out that a member of the public asked, and thank you, sir, for, for your comments. I appreciate that. Um, but no, this was uh, uh, a larger issue related to the governor and the, the uh, announcement at Overly High School. Yes, it says it's, uh, the governor announced at Overly High School that he is going, well, he's proposing to the legislature uh, $25 million for air conditioning for schools. Now, personally, I don't know if that means it is indeed for Baltimore County, um, so I can't speak to that, but I just know what it states. And, and um, right, and I understand. And uh, isn't that, uh, and the question that this person in public said is, isn't that the reason for the purpose of the sale of the North Point Government Center was to, for the air conditioning of the school. So that is a question I have myself, and I haven't read up much on that. But, um, sir, sure. if you'd yeah. like to speak to that, yeah, please. I would. Thank, you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, so on the air conditioning question, and I'll, I'll get to that, and then I'd like to just sort of talk a little bit about some other issues. But so actually, we've been working hard as the state legislative delegation to Annapolis. I know Delegate Minnick had already spoke. Delegate Weir is here as well. Uh, Senator Stone is recovering from surgery, otherwise he'd be here too. Um, Can you introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Delegate John Olszewski, Jr. Sure. We'll make sure we follow protocol, right? <laughs> um, so the $25 million fund is something that the state has never done before, um, and the governor has done it at the urging of primarily the Baltimore County House delegation, um, which I'm honored to chair, and I've gotten some great support from our local reps and the rest of the county. Um, Baltimore County has one-third of the unair conditioned schools in the state. So of that $25 million fund, we've pretty much been, we're pretty much expecting at least a third of that fund to go towards air conditioning in schools in Baltimore County. Now, 8 to 10 to $12 million a year is only a, a small piece of what we actually need to actually air condition all of our schools. Um, my understanding is that Baltimore County has an infrastructure sort of long-term plan, and the school system certainly would be better to talk about this, but it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars of expense in terms of all of the upgrades they want to do. Um, that's the $25 million question. As far as the sort of proposal process that's been played out, I think Sonny hit the nail on the head a little bit, and we were pretty animated with, with the um, representative of the county executive on Friday when uh, we had a chance to talk to them, because it is important. There are a lot of legitimate questions that people have about what's being proposed. And it's impossible for, for me, and quite frankly, I know if, if it's impossible for me, it's impossible for anyone else to sort of make an informed decision about whether or not it's something that actually enhances our community or is a detriment. And so we've been urging very strongly that the county executive have a team, that he come out, that he have the superintendent of schools, he has the chief of police, he has folks that could actually answer these very legitimate questions about the process, to come forward and talk to the community so people can say, this is what it will mean. 
Um, and then I, I think at that point, I mean, it is impossible to make a decision and to know what's being discussed. And there are a lot of moving parts. So you, the commitment you have from me and I know from the rest of, of the legislative team and I'm sure the councilmen is that we will do whatever we can to make sure that any questions you have get answered. And then once those questions are answered, as we make a collective determination about whether or not it's a good idea to move forward or not, as a community, we'll support whatever we decide as a community. And that's, and I, and I, that, that's my pledge today. Um, and, you know, trust me, I, I share in that sense of it, it would have been a lot better to come on the front end and say, here's what we're thinking about. Give us some feedback. That's, that's the way, that's the, the best way to govern, um, I think, is, to, is to, to talk to people and say, hey, you know, maybe, and I don't, I don't again, I don't know what, what the proposals are going to be, but say we, we can maybe provide improved or new facilities for a theater group or, or whatever. But to have that conversation on the front end instead of saying, here's a press release, um, you know, that's, that's how a lot of us learned about it. But nobody... Well, what do you mean? Just, are we following the process? Thank you both. Listen, everybody, and we want to have that meeting with the county executive and Jimmy Johnson and everybody else, and we can have it right in the theater at the North Point Government Center. And 650 people can all fit there. So please let us know, and we'll be glad to have it there. Okay, and thank you. Let's, can we... Can we get back to? Thank you so much. And and we're we're glad that our elected officials are here. We're, we welcome you. And we're glad you're here. And we count on you to represent us. We're counting on you to fight for us and to do what the people want. Okay. You got it? Let's go back to the questions. Yeah. And uh, I think uh, I think it is very helpful that our, our representatives came, so can you all, whether you agree or disagree, it's okay. I think as Americans, they get a round of applause for coming. And, and in the spirit of transparency, I know folks, some, some folks might be getting hungry or thirsty. Um, and the reason I say that is that, uh, you know, we have this room until 2 o'clock, uh, which is an interesting question because you know, we can't just snap our fingers and the chairs all go back at 2 o'clock. Uh, so we'll probably need to wrap up at 1.30-ish. All right. Uh, and also, um, just I want to recognize there is a company that uh, did these uh, for us, uh, these shirts. If you're interested in making a donation for the shirts, uh, you can. There's a, out in the parking lot afterwards. You can do that. No one's making any money on that. In fact, we're losing money on that. <laughs> Um, but just so, so you know. And the second thing in, in, in the spirit of transparency is, I see your hand there, sorry, is that um, some of the questions um, are difficult to answer. They're hypotheticals. So we have those, okay? And, uh, yeah, thank you. But so here's one question, for example. Um, is the community meeting uh, required for a PUD proposal? Okay, that's, that's, that's a, an example of a pretty specific, straightforward question that you know, yes. gentlemen yes, can is. answer. Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. A actually, we changed the PUD process, so I think there's two meetings. So I know right. there is two meetings. Right. Not one, you have two. Now, and then there's other questions that, and just to be honest with everybody, or I should say, we don't, we don't, we say in full disclosure, because, you know, when people say, I'll be honest with you, I'm like, oh, well, so what is it the rest of the time? Um, <laughs> is when you say, is person X involved in the process? So to be in full disclosure, if a per person's name is mentioned and they're not a public official, um, you know, we'll, we, may, we may recycle that question and address it a different way. Okay, but we're not going to throw your question away, but we'll just address it differently. Well, what, um, why, don't we, why don't we just, it's a transparent well, meeting, right. it's a transparent meeting, why don't we just, why don't we ask the question? I mean, it's, okay. oh, it's, well, it's transparency, yeah, that's, awesome. that's the best thing. My question is, well, what does John Bond There you go. Yes, sir. Yeah. Have to do well, you see, I set you. I'm sorry for you. I set, I set you all up on purpose. No, you're exactly right. I, I set you all up on purpose because this is what we call collaboration, <laughs> and this is why we put the circle this way. So, I, 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 so, can, I can answer this. Because, yeah, that was his like question. Like everybody else, Go ahead. we all know that he went to the communities with a plan that he wanted to see if he, uh, if, if the county did something that he, if there was community support for it. Um, he has the ability, like any other person would, to be part of the process to put in a, a SFP or RFP like anybody else would. Can I ask just one more question? Yes, sir, you may. How 
can a man who is in bankruptcy? Yeah. Right a here. Man. I don't know if he's in bankruptcy, and, and I don't know if he has. Well, he wasn't well. bankruptcy. Okay. He was also being sued. I asked the question: Who are people involved with John Bontram? And I would not get an answer. He, if he's if he's making a bid, he's bankrupt. He's got to have other people backing him, and we'd like to know who those people are. And that's a, that's a question you would have to ask him, sir. I, I, I did. Right, ask. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, uh, we'll we'll invite him to the public meeting and go from there. Um, so, related to your question, sir, and just in all fairness, uh, I wanted to have there to be a sort of an agreement that questions like that could come out. So, I'm glad that you walk for your question. Right. Okay. Uh, here's a question about the RFP process. Uh, will community members be on the committee that decides on the equity of what is being lost versus what is being gained? Um, and um, you know, anybody, sir? Procedure alert. Did you send him an invitation? Yes, I did. I'll predict you a blizzard if you're not going to follow procedure. <laughs> <laughs> Done it before. Okay. So as I said, I'm with the Greater Dundalk Community Council. We had a meeting Thursday. Brian Shepard from the County Executive's Office was there. A couple of things that we were told. Uh, one was that the RFPs will be available electronically so that we'll all be able to see what the proposals are, because that was one of the questions we had, what would be proposed. Secondly, we did ask about who was going to be on the committee. What we were told is that it was mostly going to be uh, county staff. We also, we also urged that there should be some community representation on it. Um, he also mentioned, though, that there are some talk of trying to have a meeting in early May with the county executive here in the Dundalk area. GDCC said that we'd be happy to help work on doing that to address just these very same issues. So that's what we had heard up to that point. So we'll keep everyone informed as well. Well, here's a related question to that. A gentleman from Dun Logan, uh, Mr. Rodman, and um, he's here. Okay. And uh, your your kind of, your question is sort of related to some that I've had. So if you want to go ahead. I mean, if that's what you guys want, and if that, if you cool. agree, to, and yeah, of course. Well, in the proposal, I, I hear what you're saying, and and I agree that it should be um, open. That's 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 what I would say. Okay. Right. And thank you. There will be no, there will be no interruptions of recreational programs. And the, the gentleman has a good question. Other people have asked that similar question, and it was something that Ms. Evie and I talked about was um, that, uh, you know, Dundalk High School, we had a very excellent procedure. I was involved in that along with many other people when the decision was to renovate, and so we spent the year discussing amongst the faculty and amongst the community, should we renovate the building? And then the county and the government decided, you know, we could renovate for $97 million or we could build new for $105 million. So we're thinking, hmm, you know. And so, of course, state matching funds and things like that. And in case you haven't noticed, there's a, a Titanic being built up the street. Yeah. Um, right? And the thing is, what's really nice about this is that it was an open, collaborative process, you know, all the way around, right? And then, of course, so we're going to have the students in the new building before the old building goes. And I yeah. definitely want right. to talk about Sorry. that because ahead, it's a little bit more than what you just said. Right, understood. Um, Myself and Mr. Parker were the driving force in what's happening now at Dundalk High School. The high school was in deplorable conditions. 
we set up a meeting with the superintendent, who was Mr. Harrison, with the whole delegation, with the Board of Education, and with then representatives from the county executive office. They looked at it and said it would cost about $60 million to renovate the building for a 20-year lifespan. Or they came up with a plan that says we can spend 80 or $90 million, we can replace two schools and have a lifespan of 60 years with state-of-the-art um, school. And when you see this school, it's going to be a model for the country. We have a $100 million project sitting right here in Dundalk. And Ed, I want to thank you for bringing that to my attention and us being collaborative on that because this community deserves something like that. And it's going to be like the centerpiece of our community. So I just wanted to give you the whole picture of why uh, they did that instead of renovating. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yep. And uh, so that was just, I was involved in that myself personally uh, on the, the inside at the, at the school. So, um, and uh, so there's a couple questions here that are related to that, that are connected. Is it possible for the county and state to do that? Yeah. See, it all come, it's all about funding. They're trying to they're trying to save money and raise money, and they don't have the money to do that. I mean, if that's you know. That would be a perfect. All they want to do is they go to the Well, okay. yeah, but if you, uh, can we get you a card? Right. That's actually what this question is about right here. You know, it might, it might, it might be a good idea that if the county puts um, a notice out of anybody who may be interested in putting in a, a SFC, we're going to have this meeting and you can hear what the community would like to have in your building. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the person who's, who's putting that proposal in, but if they hear from your group and maybe the course of the Chesapeake or the Dundalk Wrestling Program, if they hear that, then, you know, maybe in their proposal they'll do something that will take care of all that. That's yeah, exactly. Well, and that's what this, and, and, yeah. and I can try to make that happen, right. but generally when you have RFPs or SFPs, you generally, it, does, it generally doesn't work like that. They just put a proposal out, you get a proposal, but this is a little more complicated because you got all the programs, and so I, I hear what you're saying, but I can't stress enough that if, if the proposal doesn't meet the test of, um, of the community having enhancements and all the programs continuing and, and, not, and not losing fields, that, you know, that's not something I'm going to support. I can't stress that enough. And that's, thank you, sir. Well, I just want to be bridging off of that because some of those questions are... Uh, well, I mean, I really want to address these. I can, if I can. Okay. I'm, I'm not very political, so this may sound really That's okay. But you say that are you the bottom line? Does that mean if you... It has to come before... The, this, this, the deal with the, the, you know, the proposals and the SFBs, anything on the sale has to come before the county council. And if I don't support it, my colleagues, it's more of a, you know... Collaboration. Yeah, it's, it's, right. They more defer to the councilman in the district. Right. right. Collaboration. Work. That's correct. So. All right, but no, seriously, these are questions that are related to all that, just to, so you all know that other folks have asked those things. One of these is about A and B and the replacement of facilities and things like that. So it says that uh, replacement facilities will be found, and so the question here is where, to, uh, where do you propose, not you personally, but whoever you, you know, the person who's going to do this, where is it proposed that a 650-seat full-stage theater with storage be built, you know, the state-of-the-art new scale-up, because we've set a standard with Dundalk High School. We certainly don't want to step down from that because the whole idea is, you know, to have a reason to come and live and work and play in Dundalk. So, um, so there was that one, uh, the location of these facilities. And then this one here is under option A and B. Um, and then again, my colleagues from Norwood are here and Eastwood and Hollibird um, is that under option A, um, option A says doesn't provide small magnet school class sizes because uh, Norwood, of course, is 112 capacity and uh, Hollibird is at 65% capacity. 
Um, and then Eastwood is, I think, 91 percent. Uh, yeah, 112 percent. Right. And, 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 and dealing um, with those mm -hmm. issues, and Ed, you correct me if I'm wrong, has there been any discussions at the Board of Education level of at least looking into uh, doing K through 8 because of monetary, uh, monetary uh, ways that the county could save money or the school system could save money and, and put more into the system? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but have those discussions occurred? It has not, it has not come before this Other than the citizens who express And then, uh, I'm sorry, the just, line, there, go ahead. There, there are two processes at play. Mm -hmm. Correct. There's, there's both this SSC process that has to be reviewed and approved by the council, so it's not going to be, if the county executive wants to award it, there's still a second, a second stage that he has to follow and go before the council. But in addition to that, there's the school <coughs> board process, and as a former school board member myself, uh, I sort of know that in order to make these changes and change school boundaries and close schools, and then there's also an appeal process that comes after that. So there's a whole. If, and again, right. in full disclosure, if you're interested, if you're like, well, you keep saying Comar State Law uh, on the back table. If we have you know 12 seconds at the end of the meeting, I can show you uh, the Comar on that. Um, it is uh, 13A uh, 020901. <coughs> I can write it up here. You can Google it. Easy to find. And as, as the uh, representative said that. You know, uh, if, if there is a closing or if the school board decides to close a school and then there's a procedure they're required to follow through state law and then there's also an appeal that that can be filed, you know, if that were to be chosen. So, uh, How is it that they've already so. decided to close these schools? Well, that's uh, well, a great question. Their, their uh, terminology is that the school's not being closed, everything's being relocated. So well, if you were to if you look at the back. state law, the word relocate is in there, uh, and um, it's, it's worded very yeah, interestingly. I mean, I'm sorry, a little bit of teacher drama coming out. The the word relocate <laughs> students is in there, and that's that's part of the reason why we're concerned. Again, back to this person here that said that under option B, you know, the class sizes will be bigger, and this was the again again I'm not trying to just you know speak for the group. Is it? that as a teacher and as a researcher myself, my question was simply, uh, you know, under this here, is there a research-based best practice for why we would want to put student nine grades together, K through eight in one building, um, or something like that? And uh, there, there are good models in other parts of the country, but those children were scaled in one grade at a time over a long period of time is one option. At Newtown High School, if some of you are familiar with Newtown, Northwest side, right? Four years, scaled in grades one at a time. And so our question would be, if the children are the priority, then should we not take our time to get it right, like they did at Newtown? So, and, um, you know, that was, so under option B, it says, would, would class sizes be bigger? And I can't answer that, um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I want to make a point of clarification. I'm going to say wrong, Debbie, but I was in my eyes. Right, this is one of our committee members. I sit on the Southeast Area Advisory Council, but I just want to make a point of clarification because I think somebody got a little bit misconstrued a few minutes ago. I spoke, I spoke with Ed Parker to make sure I was correct in what I'm about to state. At the uh, meeting the other night at Hollabird Middle, there was an agent of the administration, not the county administration, but the school, bo the school administration, not an agent of the school board there saying about it being a done deal. It has not come before the school board. We didn't know anything about it. I brought that up at that meeting. They told me they were, that it had come through. But I, asking Ed, he's correct, it has not come through them. The point that I make here is that you need to make sure the school board consistently hears that you're not happy with these options. That's a piece of it. And the other piece, and I also want to say this in a, in a very polite and respectful way, just like with the councilman here, with all the elected officials, they've given their time to be here. They, elect, they went out there and put themselves out there. But by the same token, we're not here to beat up on them. We're here to talk to them and get input and get them to help us. And I don't mean that, John, but I just want you to understand. The other piece of it, the other piece is at the next meeting of our group, which is going to be on January 28th, Dr. Dance is supposed to be there. So that would be important for the people here that if they want to make sure that the school administration hears this, they should come to that meeting. I believe it's going to be at Dundalk. I'll get the information out there. It'll get out there somehow. But, I, but what I'm saying to you is there's a place and a forum for you to get and talk to Dr. Dance yourselves. 
and be able to express it. Because what we're that is the superintendent. Go ahead, you can ask the question. I don't know if I'll be able to answer it, but I'll. I just told them that. I told them that. I put the Southeast Area Advisory Council. Where I'm at, though, at the end of this whole, of the information I want to impart to everyone here is be there, talk, and bring your concerns, express your concerns, and let and make sure the school administration hears that. I, I understand. I, the board meeting is separate. You need to have Dr. Dance here also. So that's the piece that I'm going to make sure you understand. The board is the system that Dr. Dance answers to, so to speak, and they're the people that it goes through. But the bottom line is, if the administration is already formulating plans, then you need to talk to the administration so that by the time it gets to the school board, your input may already be there. And, and this, is what I'm, this is what I'm going to do as a direct result of today's meeting. I am going to draft a letter to Dr. Dance, and I'm going to tell him I attended a meeting today with a lot of the parents from Eastwood Elementary School who have a lot of answer, a lot of questions that have not been answered, and I think it's in the best interest of him to meet with those parents at a forum where they can have their questions addressed. How's that? And the, other, and the other piece, we encourage the elected officials to come to the 28th meeting if they would like to be there when we talk to Dr. Dance also. So thank you all. Um, I'm going to turn the mic back over to the moderators. I didn't mean to take over. Okay. All right, thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. I'm, 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 well, yes, yeah, uh, yeah, all three, uh, okay. all three, okay. all three, okay. and, and, <laughs> okay, well, we will draft the letter, and Ed just made a, a great idea, um, maybe Ed, as you all may know or may not know, Ed sits on the Board of Education, he's Vice President, no, just a member now, he used to be the President, right? Vice President. And um, we'll set up a meeting and uh, maybe even with the uh, senators and delegates and uh, we'll, you know, we'll, re we'll do what we're supposed to do, be your advocates, and we will relay your concerns to him as well as write the letter and see if he can come up with to a forum that we can have some questions answered. All right, so folks, a couple things here, very loud, is uh, again, in the spirit of collaboration, um, there's a couple options that we have. We want there's some information we want to get to you specifically related to the meetings. It seems very loud, I don't know. Um, because there's a whole swath of meetings all over the place. Uh, so just that we want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure you folks are familiar with the option A versus B. At some point we could we could all write a book on this and make a whole lot of money and donate it to the school system or something. Um, but we want to take if we can take that information down if that's all right. Um, and it is in public documents, so we can show it to you. And replace it with some of the meeting dates. And I want to start with um, this is the 12th. And then so on the 14th, um, is, uh, there's a meeting at Lock Raven High School, I think 6.30. And I believe that's for the uh, Mays Chapel situation. That's somewhat related. Uh, and then, uh, Ms. Christine, uh, the, uh, the 17th is the meeting, correct? Is it? Right, and now it, it, it's interesting. Unfortunately, this is where technology comes in, is, will be helpful because, see, I would like to be at the Halliburton meeting <coughs> and the Eastwood meeting, but I don't think I can because I think they're at the same time. They are. Oh, 